What's up YouTube? Welcome back. 9mm ammo test series continued. Today we are on number 5. This is a double tap test. We have here double tap 9mm plus P 115 grain DT lead free solid copper hollow point. I personally love solid copper hollow points. I think they perform exceptionally well. They always uniformly expand. I'm sure that this one's gonna perform pretty well, but we're gonna put it to the test. They advertise 1,275 feet per second out of a Glock 17, and we happen to have a Glock 17. That has a four and a half inch barrel, and we also have a Smith & Wesson Shield nine millimeter that has a 3.1 inch barrel, so we'll test it in that also. We'll run five rounds through each one of these guns into each one of these targets, and we're gonna get an average of velocity and foot pounds, and we're gonna figure out accuracy. I always state that we do all of our accuracy testing offhand. I don't use a bench or a rest or a table or anything like that because I consider this practical accuracy testing. You don't get all those luxuries if you're ever in a defensive shooting. After that, we're gonna move the chronograph to in front of the gel blocks. That way we capture the velocity of the actual bullet that is striking the gel block. And we have two 16 inch 10% clear ballistics gel blocks lined up. One of them's been shot through once, but that's pretty much just gonna be the catcher block. I don't think we'll get through 16, but hey, we might. Testing explained, let's get to shooting. All right, hopefully the chronograph behaves. We're in kind of low light. You can't tell on the camera, but we are. We have five rounds loaded up. We're gonna go first with the shield. The left B8 target. We are 20 feet off the target, 15 feet off of the chronograph. And right there, I did not have a good feed situation. My magazine is seated, but I went to go drop the slide with the slide release, and immediately we had a little nose dive right there. So we stuck on the feed ramp, which admittedly is not exactly clean and not exactly oiled up, but these guns run flawlessly. This gun doesn't jam on much. I don't know if I'm going to consider this an actual jam. It just had a little bit of a problem feeding the first round. We'll see if it jams up under firing. Usually things like that don't. A lot of times I can probably smack the mag and get it to go. We'll see if that works. Nope. Let's give it a little bit more of a... There you go. So now it's chambered. Hopefully we don't have any hangups. Usually nothing much hangs up a shield, like nothing. All right, we have 1117. We have 1110, and let me just say right off the bat, they say that this is a plus P round, but it feels, and it's got velocity to it, but it feels really nice in the hand, especially out of this. I mean, I shoot a lot of 10 millimeter and 45, things like that, but it feels very comfortable out of a defensive compact firearm. Some nine millimeters can make these defensive compact firearms jump a little bit, but this one feels very nice. We have 1090. Eleven eighteen. And ten ninety one. I'm not even joking. It feels like <laughs> it's gonna be a weird analogy, but it's like shooting butter. I can't explain it. It's like shoop, it just it's very soft. It's very nice to shoot. I really don't experience that too much with these smaller guns. All right, we had pretty good impacts. I only had one that was not touching the X ring, and we had one, two on the X touching parts of it. So one, two, three, four, five. Very nice. Like I said, they shoot beautifully out of that shield, and accuracy is usually there with the shield. So very, very acceptable. Let's see how this goes out of the Glock. All right, cross our fingers on chronograph. And that would have fed, if they did go through the shield, and they fed the first time on this Glock, so. Actually, I need to step up a hair. I don't know what my problem is. I can't get my Glock sights here right now, but. <laughs> the chronograph says 9580. That's pretty wonky. Uh, but that was a good shot. It hit the X mark. We have 1184. Glad we got a reading. I got a little high and left on that one. And we have 1197. Oh, 
1191. And we have 1199. Feels good out of the Glock, too. I'd say it feels like normal 9mm out of the Glock. Let's take a look and see how I did. I know I threw two of them up there to the left. So not to make excuses, but lighting is always tricky where I'm at. Every day is a different story. I always have the lighting to my back, and it really, I'm having a hard time picking up my front sight. We just did a test about 20 minutes ago. I was picking up my front sight perfect on this Glock. Now I can't pick it up. It's a blurry mess. But still, even with that, I have three in the X-Ring, and I have two. Like I said, I felt those go up a little bit. Um, but very nice accuracy. You'll definitely take that for defensive shooting every day. All right, up first is the shield. 15 feet off the chronograph and gel. Good shot, I believe. No chronograph rating. We're really running out of light for the day. All right, right where we wanted to impact and coming from the side, we have a pretty nice wound channel there. That's a good wo permanent wound cavity. We travel, it's got actually a pretty cool wave to it. We travel all the way to the 13 and a half inch mark, I would say, and then there's a bounce back back to 13 inches. The projectile is facing forward and it has opened up. Let's see if I can zoom in for you there and then follow that wound track back. Sorry, it's a new gel block and after you have to take the heat gun to them, they're a little bit wavy, but it'll be better on the remelt. Let's take a look from the top. All right, coming from the top, you see a very nice spiral type of permanent wound cavity. I like when they do that. That's pretty gnarly. It's like a razor blade has been twisting through there. Takes a little bit of a deviation. Sometimes copper doesn't exactly go on straight path when it's a hollow point, but you see it opened up. It appears to be opened up pretty darn nicely. That's what I do love about the solid coppers. They always do something uniform. So very nice from the top. Let's see how the Glock does. All right, let's see what kind of a difference the Glock with a four and a half inch barrel makes. Twelve hundred it registered. Twelve hundred exactly. Twelve hundred. All right, the one on the right is the one that we just hit with. And coming in from the side, I'm not going to be able to separate them out until I get from the top. You're going to get the picture, though, that they basically both did the same thing with one penetrating just a little bit further. This one out of the Glock, the one that you see that's lower, that poked to about 14 and a half, maybe at the most, and bounced back to about 13 and a half. As you can see, it's opened up nicely, just like the other one and it has a good path going back. It'll look better from the top. Let's go ahead and take a look from there. So as you can see, we basically have identical performance out of the two of them. They actually even took the same kind of twisty path and one just went a little bit farther than the other. We'll get them dug out and see if there's a difference between the opening pedals or not, but it's interesting how they pretty much mimicked each other out of two different guns. Wow, that's pretty neat. All right, after digging them out, we have the one out of the Smith & Wesson Shield here on the right. And then we have the Glock here on the left. I think the Glock pedaled back just a little bit more. You can see the, the copper cavity there in the middle is just a little bit more opened up than it is here, but they're pretty darn close. We have, of course, the weight and the size up in the corners for you. Weight retention, I, without even measuring it yet, I will tell you will be 100% unless they lost just a very little tip of their pedal, but I don't think they did. That's what I love, like I said, about these solid coppers. They almost always do it uniformly. The more increased velocity, just the more pedal back you have on these copper pellets or puddles, they usually stay intact. If not, they shatter off a little bit and veer off, but for the most part, they always stay pretty nice looking flowers. There you go. There's some more information for you. As long as it fed in my firearms, I wouldn't mind carrying it. I always love solid copper. It's got the velocity behind it. It looks interesting on the slow motion, and the permanent wound cavity is there. It's got a actually pretty cool permanent wound cavity. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ammunition. Well, there you go. A bunch of 9mm tests pretty much back to back. Now we can go ahead and do the low light testing. We're actually going to wait for the sun to go down and do that right now. So the next video you see is going to be low light 9mm testing, ammos 1 through 5 in the 9mm test series. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.